everyone. Welcome again to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad in your face for the viewing audience. It's the year of our Lord, 2014. The date is January 29th, and I have some good stuff for you today. Now, uh, you can submit to me, Conrad at ConradRocks.net. That's an email. You can uh, Twitter me, Most Radical Man on Twitter. Uh, you can go to the Conrad Rocks Facebook page. You can just get in contact with me, and every once in a while I'll go, you know what? That's a story I want to talk about uh, today. And Teresa had hit me on Most Radical Man on Twitter, and she sent me this story. And I'm like, going, you know what? We're going to talk about this. Um, first off, I want you to know there is my Most Radical Man account, at Most Radical Man. Rocks Revelation being poured out. Here's my book on the prophetic. You can go there. Um, there it is. Bam. Right there on Amazon. Open your eyes, my supernatural journey. As a matter of fact, one of the things that we're talking about today is going to be, it's in my book. I'm going to mention it. Um, so there you go. Now, if you want to, um, you can hit me up at Most Radical Man, or you can... You can uh, Face, go to the Conrad Rocks Facebook page. I'll often see your your stuff. So today, we're going to talk about something that started out on the blaze. Now, first off, I don't glorify the devil. That's not my job. I don't like, I mean, he's, he's doing a pretty good job on his own. And a lot of people have issue with me talking about demon possession. They'll say things like, well, you know, you're glorifying the devil. You're giving him too much attention. We need to make disciples. Well, dude, this is a part of making a disciple. If you believe the word of God, and oh, there's angels. Well, there's devils, too. There's demons. And you encounter them, and you probably don't know it. If you don't believe in them, you don't know it. The greatest trick the devil ever did is proven he didn't exist, to quote Kaiser Sose from The Unusual Suspects. Yes, I don't watch those movies anymore. But I remember that. I thought, you know what? He's right. He's right. The devil's going around trying to teach Christians that he doesn't exist, but he gets he's totally in politics, totally in into music, totally into the Grammys. We saw that yesterday. He's totally I, I'm sitting here. I'm going through my news stream. I ask a Christ, I ask questions that rock, and I'm sitting here. I'm like, going, you know, these people. There's a lot of people that just don't know they're being deceived. I mean, really. And I don't think I know everything. But there's some. There's some, it, it, when you're in the fish tank. When you're in the fish tank and you're swimming with the fishes, you know. Oh, I'm just another fish. You know, and. Uh, you're just all swimming in the same direction. You're not making any waves, you know. And if someone swims the other direction, like a meme I saw with the fish swimming the other way, you know, buck against the crowd. If someone's swimming the other way, you, you think they're an outcast. Well, maybe they learned something. Maybe they know something. In a fish story, you know, Jesus says, make fishers of men. Well, just think about this. Just think about it. Fisherman's on the shore of the... Or he's on the boat or he's on the shore. He's in a different environment. He even breathes something different. God breathed into Adam's nostrils. He, it all started with a kiss. He breathed into that lump of clay. You're nothing but talking dirt without God. You're, you can't even talk without God. That breath started with a kiss from God. And the fish, they're in a different environment. That's all they've ever known. But there's a hook. Something's appealing to them. Something shiny. Something tasty. And they're brought out of that environment. And then they're cleaned up. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's a little different. Maybe that fish maybe that fish gets tossed in. You know, they're swimming they're swimming in a different direction. Just think about it. So anyway, I found this story here. Um 
actually, and this is from the Blaze, and I think that's Glenn Beck, isn't it? Glenn Beck. I like him. Um, and I'm going to go to a different one. We're going to play it. We're going to play an audio and everything. But I want you to understand, I'm not here to glorify the devil. Um, that's not what I'm. I'm here to do. Um, I'm trying to give you tools that enable you to overcome. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God are the pulling down of strongholds. There's warfare. If you believe the Bible, there's going to be warfare. If you're not having any warfare in your life, then I'm going to say maybe you need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. We need to examine ourselves, see if we're in the faith. If you're not, somebody said to me one time, they said, you know, Conrad, if, if you never... If the devil, devil never crosses your path, maybe you're both headed the same direction. I'm like, wow. So when I get warfare or when I get a word from God, I'm expecting warfare. And I'm going to tell you, there's stuff that goes on in the spiritual realm that I don't talk about now because I'm like, going, you know, I, mm. and when a demon comes up and goes, I'm going to kill you today. <laughs> you know, do you run around telling people that? <laughs> No, what you do, that's that's another thing. You have authority. Jesus says it in, in Matthew, um, let's see, it's Mark, right? Well, Mark's one of them. Let's see. Let's see, Mark 16, 17. Let's go to that one. He said, you know, we're going <clears> to, <throat> these signs shall follow them to believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. So we can do these things. We can do these things if we believe. Uh, we'll probably examine that scripture with a um, where one guy had a problem with belief. We'll probably get to that, but let's read this story because there are contemporary there are contemporary there's contemporary demonic activity going on right now, and you need to be aware of it, and you need to you need to know how to overcome it. But I don't want you. And here's the here's the problem. Anytime I say anything, anytime anybody says anything. You know, it's, oh, here's a revelation from God, let's make a denomination. No, this is an arrow in your quiver. This is an arrow in your quiver. You're still walking after God, right? It's an arrow in your quiver. So don't sit here and just focus. Don't start being a demon chaser because you're not making disciples. It's just one aspect. One aspect. For those of you that get out of control, you know, this is just one teaching. But I've seen so many people just make their whole ministry about deliverance. Yeah. Maybe that's good. I'm not called to it. I'm not called to it. But I do know a little bit about it. I've had some first-hand experience, man. Um, it's in my book, Open Your Eyes, My Supernatural Journey. But we're going to talk about this. This is from uh, The Blaze. <clears throat> I'm going to see if I can get it on the screen here so you can watch it. Yeah, here we go. A real-life demon possession is being reported in Indiana. A terrified mother... And this is from January 27th. Hold on. A terrified mother claims she watched in horror as her demon-possessed nine-year-old son walked backwards up a wall and ceiling. Her claims would be easy to dismiss if a child services caseworker and a nurse weren't reportedly there to witness it all. Now notice that this was a kid that walked backwards up a wall in a ceiling. Now, there have been some visions of Our, Our Lady of Fatima in 1917. There were some visions in the 60s, this, uh, the, the Mary apparition in the sun. And somebody had an 8mm uh, camcorder. Some kids saw this film. Uh, or saw, Excuse me. They saw Mary, supposedly. Only these kids. They waited for her. And um, she was supposedly in the sky. And only the kids could see her. And lots of people gathered to them. And... They got this on tape. These kids walked backwards at a fairly fast pace, very precisely. I'm just pointing it out there, man. We're probably gonna we're probably gonna touch some. We're probably gonna ruffle some feathers here today, man. Anyway, Latoya Ammons claims all three of her children show signs of being possessed, including evil smiles and strangely deep voices. The Indianapolis Star reports. The mother says she also witnessed her 12-year-old daughter levitating in their Gary, Indiana home. Now, in my book, um, and, and I, I want you guys to understand, I'm a Christian now. Uh, when, when I'm promoting my book on uh, Open Your Eyes, My Supernatural Journey, it's on Amazon, both Kindle, I've done these things. I have, I have levitated 
bef before I was walking with God. It's in my book. I know what this is like firsthand. Um, I was having supernatural experiences, and I went to the church for answers, people. And this is why I wrote my book. I was reaching out to the New Age, okay? First off, I went, I went to church, and I'm thinking, you know, I'm a kid. I'm a kid having supernatural experiences. Like this. Levitation. We'll talk about the incubus, succubus spirit here in a minute. Nobody knew. There was nobody with the tools. Matter of fact, they denied that it could even happen. And I'm sitting here powerless. Tormented by demons. Because nobody knew. Nobody had the tools. I gotta read Hosea four six right now. You know, it's just it's resonating in my spirit. Hold on. Now people people love to quote this. Hosea four six. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now whose people? God's people. They're ignorant. Let me tell you what the word ignorant means. It it has something to do with the word ignore. The Bible is the best selling book in the history of mankind. And if we're not making it a priority in our lives, we're ignoring the book. If we're ignoring the book, the word of God, the written, what he spoke, then we're ignoring God. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for ignorance. It's there. Now, here we go. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. You need to quote the rest of that scripture, people. It's not a, it's not a feel good, feel warm phrase. Oh, I didn't know. I'm destroyed for lack of... No. Destroyed is a big word. It's not like, oh, phooey, I burnt the muffins. My people are destroyed by lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. In other words, you're willfully ignorant. I will reject thee. Thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Contrast that with this verse. In Revelations 1, 5, and 6, and from Jesus Christ, who's the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth. He's the prince of the kings of the earth, right? Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. He washed us from our sins in his own blood. And he's made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. So here we have um, God saying, you can't be a priest. In Hosea 4, 6, my people, because you reject the knowledge, you can't be a priest. But these people here in Revelation 1, 6, we have what's called the kingly anointing. Proverbs 25, 2. We have the kingly anointing. Okay, When Jesus says, um, ask, seek, and knock, ask and receive, seek, and you shall find, knock. There's something interesting about the kings. We're kings and priests. Those of us that are saved, that, that make this Revelation 1, 6 statement, that are there, we have something called a kingly anointing. And there's something that kings do. Kings are curious. Kings are searchers. They seek things out. For Proverbs 25, 2, and God digs this. Okay? God has laid out so much stuff in Scripture for our tools, for our arrows in our quiver, that we cannot be willfully ignorant. If we're willfully ignorant, it's, it's really bad. But here we have a promise. It's the glory of God to conceal a thing. There are things hidden, man, in Scripture. In this whole demon thing, it's there. There are tools that are front line. They're right there, front row and center tools. And then there's stuff that as you get off and seek God, you can learn. But here it is. It's the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings to search out a matter. So continuing on, um, this says it went from the Indianapolis Star. Strangely enough, the, the scary-sounding incident is outlined in official documents. Further, Gary Police Captain Charles Austin told the Star that he's a believer after making several visits to the home and interviewing witnesses. He first thought the family was making stories up as a part of a get-rich-quick scheme. Okay, which is not... We're going to listen to the audio clip. I'm going to show you the video and all that. We're going to play it. Ammon's home was exercised... Now, here's the thing. It was exercised by a Catholic priest in a number of ceremonies, it wasn't once, it was a number of ceremonies, that were reportedly authorized by the Diocese of, of Gary.
The story apparently became so believable that officers with the police department said they were too scared to stay at the house and some city officials wouldn't even step foot on the property. This is going to be linked in conradrocks.net today. So you can you can go watch the video on your own. I'm going to play it here. You can listen to the audio too. The 32-year-old mother says the spirits that haunted her family's house were only vanquished after she moved away and underwent several exorcisms. The unbelievable story has come to light after the Indianapolis Star obtained hundreds of pages of official documents relating to the case. The Ammons family moved into the rental house in Carolina Street in Gary, Indiana, back in November 2011. They soon noticed strange occurrences including swarms of flies around the house, footsteps in the basement, and wet footprints streaking across the living room floor. Now, I've noticed this several times. In my walk with Christ, um, these things are happening. I mean, dude, the devil likes to show up where Christians are. You know, he does. He showed up where Christ was in the wilderness. Um, how do you do battle if the devil's never there? <laughs> you know, he shows up and he does. Um, one of the things I've noticed, he does manipulate insects. Um, I've been in Denny. Whoa, I've been in Denny's praising God. I was sitting there just the just the presence of God hit me. I was with another worshiper. We were having lunch after church talking about the sermon, and we were working up things of the Spirit. We were just getting joyous in the Lord. And then all of a sudden, it was like the world kind of, it, it was kind of like the world fled away. And then these these flies, they came up in a in a, a hover of a ball, and they were front, they were in front of me. And I laughed, because I knew, you know, they couldn't do anything. Beelzebub means Lord of the Flies. Just so you know. Um, someone was trying to go to an aglo meeting not too long ago. Insects crawled up on someone's feet. Someone's feet went ow, and they dropped a heavy object onto their foot. I mean, you know, there there are things. You know, now we know to take authority over these things. The the devil, can he works through insects, Lord of the Flies. Why do they call him that? Because he works through flies. The Amos family moved to the rental house. Um, swarms of flies around the house, footsteps of the basement, were in wet footprints streaking across the living room floor. So, yeah, maybe you guys have heard the, the knocking. In my book also, I talk about the knocking demon. There's this, it does that, like, hello, I'm here. <laughs> you know, now, for the first time I started experiencing that, I'm like going, what? So I'm like, going, oh, it's a devil, <laughs> because it was knocking too uniformly for it to be an animal. And a friend of mine was moving in with me. We were, he was going to stay with me a few months or whatever. And I'm like, hey, dude, uh, when you hear that knocking thing like that, you know, just uh, tell it to leave in the name of Jesus. Good thing he was a Christian. Let me tell you what happens if you're not a Christian. And this is kind of the thing here when it, when it took several exorcisms. I'm like going, well, gee, it shouldn't take several exorcisms. Okay, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you a scripture because you need to be a Christian, dude, if you're going to deal with a demon. You really do. Hold on for this. Hold on for this. When I cry, oh God, to my Thank you for visiting ConradRocks.net. Conrad Rocks is supported by people just like you. If you've been blessed by Conrad Rocks, please prayerfully consider giving an offering. You can conveniently do so by using the Contribute button on the sidebar at conradrocks.net. Regular contributors get a spot on the Conrad's Comrades page, which links back to the blog or social media of your choice. You can also help Conrad Rocks by sharing your favorite posts on Facebook. Thanks again for being a part of Conrad Rocks. Remember, Jesus rules. That is higher than going to be talking about why you need to be a Christian if you're going to be messing with demons because there's an example and you don't have Christ in you they don't recognize any authority but Jesus they don't recognize any authority but Jesus um they're just toying with you if they pretend if they pretend they're toying I mean you know they're pretending here we go in Acts 19:11 and God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Now, wait a minute. God wrought, it was Christ. He says, it's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. Galatians 2.20, right? Okay, so here we go. I'm crucified Christ. Nevertheless, I live not yet, 
not I, but Christ liveth in me. And he, the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So Christ lives in us, and God wrought spiritual miracles by the hands of Paul. Okay? He's going to come in and work miracles through the hands of Paul. Like the aglow vision I had, an empty glove. God's about to put his hand in that glove. So think of it that way. So the miracles happen because of God in us. The, by our hands, we do them. Now, so that from his body were bought sick handkerchiefs or aprons and diseases apart from them, and evil spirits went out from them. Now, let's go on a little bit. There were certain vagabond Jews. Now, Jews, they were not, they were exorcists, and they didn't, they aren't called Christians, and we'll, we'll see that in a minute. Uh, they took upon themselves to call over what, them which had evil spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by, whom Jesus, by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. Now, I want you to understand something. They weren't Christians, they didn't call Jesus Lord, but they took his name and they took it in vain, okay? You cannot say um, Jesus' name like like a tagline. It's not a tagline. So many people are preaching that today. Oh, just say in Jesus' name and everything will be okay. No, it means in your nature, character, and authority. Let me show you why. So these vagabond Jews, they were trying to um, cast out this demon. And there were seven sons of Shiva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. Yeah, they looked religious, just like this Catholic thing. They look religious here. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know, but who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them, so they fled out of the house naked and wounded. So there you go. You've got to be a Christian if you're going to deal with this. Now, I told you I was going to play the, um, the audio file so you can hear it, and we'll talk a little bit about it. No evil shall befall you, nor shall, shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. I noticed there was like horse flies on the inside porch, and this was, you know, the beginning of winter. So that was very odd to me. We would lock the basement door, and you would hear something hit hit the door, boom, and you would hear dogs barking. No dogs, dogs outside. No dogs. We would go look. No dogs. One time, they she woke up in the middle of the night, maybe like three in the morning, and um, they saw this shadowy figure pacing back and forth in the living room. And I saw one like coming into full image. It was coming out of my closet. I've never seen it like that before. I would see the shadows, you know, but I've never seen it like how I'm looking at you and you're looking at me. You can see it stretching his stomach. And, it, and my grandson was crying. Oh, oh, mom, grandma, help, help. And then we go to his leg and his leg was bulging. I'm like, oh my God, tell you look. It was bulging out of his arm. And then we pray over him, pray over him, pray over him, pray over him, and we know him, and we know him. Latoya took me inside the house and showed me different stuff. I didn't see anything that was relevant to what she said, even though other people did. So I was very skeptical. I just figured she owed me money, and this is a fabricated story. And that's not strange to my walk of life. That does happen, you know. Like I said, I thought I heard it all. This is a new, <laughs> new one to me. And I told my daughter, I said, they're going to make it look like we are hurting these children. So we're going to have to get some help some kind of place, some kind of way. we got to convince somebody that this is actually going on. This boy was um, in one of the um, emergency room areas. He was kind of growling, you know, and, and his grandmother was uh, holding his hands and, and trying to coax him back. And all of a sudden he started, you know, she was kind of backing him up and toward the wall. And then he started to walk up the wall backwards, to, did a flip over her head. And uh, in, and the, there was the psychologist and the social ser uh, service worker in that room that saw that, and they ran out and got the uh, um, security. And the security called the chaplain, and you know he called me, and they got the police involved and all that. Until he saw what the other one did when he went up that wall, 
then he like, oh my God, this is impossible. Nobody can do this. Nobody. There's five people that saw this happen, and they're you know different walks of life. That that does change things a little bit. I have, I have a hard to believe that all five of those people will say this just to be saying it. We'll have to do an exorcism. It was pretty much without incident until we get to the part of your name and you asked for its name now so far she's always been silent so and I says is your name whatever and then all of a sudden she started convulsing and such so so now once you have a name you kind of attack it you try everything you know you kind of go through the whole right to see which things push the buttons of you know um, the, the entity and once you found what does it you keep on using it over and over whenever you would praise God in Latin no reaction. But you start condemning the demon, you know, condemning, you know, the, the evil spirit, you know, all of a sudden she's reacting to that. And then you will go back, and the moment you go back to praising God, she would stop reacting. So I went through the whole rite, and then finally went the second time, you know, and then it was just like, just focusing on the condemnations part. And that was kind of riling up. I think I even went a third time. But you could tell it was kind of weakening, and then eventually she fell asleep again. Demons can actually possess you, use you, so you can give them souls, you know, and they make you take your own life, you know, so, I mean, it's real, and a lot of people don't think about it, they live their lives day to day, and you never think that it would be you. Okay, well, I almost spent half an hour on this part of the part of the show, I didn't mean to do that. But a few things I wanted to point out, and then we'll move on to something else. Notice you talked about flies and dogs and so forth. This, um, this is not uncommon. As a matter of fact, this happens a lot. Beelzebub means Lord of the Flies. Um, several instances in my life have flies manifested. Well, one in particular, uh, after church, I was praising God inside Denny's, which if you know me, that's not normal. I might go, praise the Lord in Walmart. You never know when the power of God hits you. Anyway, it was like everything kind of kind of fled away from my face, and I could still see Denny's, but these flies, these actual physical flies, came up in a ball in front of my face, and I was laughing at them, like, wow, you know, I mean, it was like, I, I knew they had no power. Um, so next, the dark figures, um, these are, there's a lot of those that happen, um, a lot of my friends have seen them, I've seen quite a few of them, it's like you can't put your eyes on them, it's like they absorb light, and they often run. Um... Notice that in this story, a couple of notes I just want to talk about. A lot of people were witnesses to this, landlords, CPS workers, cops. A lot of people saw this. Um, and another thing that I noticed as I was listening to the clip, no one said the name of Jesus. Even the guy said, praising God. You know, God is just a title, and I, I wanted to bring that to your attention. Um, now, also, when they talk about they ask for its name, a lot of people, whenever you're getting into this deliverance stuff, don't ask for the name. I know they're using it out off of a, a scripture. Let me find it for you. What they're trying to do is use this verse here in Math, uh, Mark 5, 9. This is the, the Gadarenes. Notice, um, and they came on the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. When he's come out of the ship, immediately there met him a tombs of a man with an unclean spirit who has had his dwelling a place among the tombs. There's a lot of part of our culture right now where people fantasize about death. This is a this has a demonic background. A lot of the stuff with the music, death, metal, death, this, anything with death. Um, demons are fascinated with death. The the you know, the principality of death. And no man could bind him, not with chains, because he'd often been bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. Now. As always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. If you find, you know, th this kid in this story was growling, uh, the crying is something that they also do. And they also cut themselves. That's something that the, the religious worshipers of Baal, they would cut themselves. And um, this is another demonic influence. A lot of people that, a lot of children, a lot of teenagers today are cutting themselves. And this is traced back to a principality, a demonic activity. 
It goes back to Baal. Baal worshippers would cut themselves in worship to this demon spirit. And uh, that goes on today. It's very prevalent. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran up and worshipped him. Now, I want you to understand that uh, in spiritual warfare, demons actually, demons possess people can come to church. They actually come in. You know, <laughs> they're, they're in church, all right? Um, and crowd with a loud voice, what if I do have to do with these Jesus, the Son of the Most High God? I want you to understand that demons acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God. Do you? Okay. What I'm saying is, demons acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God. Christians acknowledge Jesus is the Son of God, right? There's a difference, though. There's a difference between us and demons. It's relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, um, for he said to come, for he said unto him, "Come out of him, thou unclean spirit." So Jesus, you know, he didn't talk, or he just says, "Come out," right? And it sometimes the demons it takes a while for them to come out. And because you can look at scriptures, I don't want to spend a whole hour on this this subject, <laughs> but I know a little bit about it. Okay. Anyway, he said, "What's thy name?" And he answered, saying, "My name is Legion, for we're many." Jesus was ne not necessarily talking to the demon, and that's why when this person is talking to the demon, you know, we're not supposed to do that. Jesus could have been asking the man, "Hey, what's your name?" And the guy could have said, "My name's Frank," you know, but basically he had given over to the demon, and the demon answered. Um, so anyway, they sent him out. All right. Now, this month's sponsor um, is, let me uh, pull that up for you. You can find this month's sponsor on Conrad's Comrades at ConradRocks.net. And this is month's sponsor is uh, Nancy Petrie. That's Petrie underscore Nancy on Twitter. And she is this month's sponsor. Thank you very much. And Ms. Pot Teak Fun Ministries is her page. You can go there directly from the Comrades Conrads page. It's Mizpah, M-I-Z-P-A-H-T-I-K-V-A-H Ministries. Check that out. Also, you want to read her book. I'm reading her book right now. It's pretty fascinating. Uh, it's about her journey, Jewish Roots Journey on Amazon. And it's not that expensive right now. If you get it on Kindle, it's $7.99. It's a five-star rated book. And it's about her journey um, as a Mizpah. If you want to know a little bit more about that, it's about she, she explains about, about how Jewish... Jesus was, and her goal is to make, uh, her calling is in the vein of Jesus being Jewish, and the Gentiles need to accept the Jewishness of Jesus. You know, there's Jew, he was Jewish. If you want to hear a little bit more about it, uh, she has a lot of amazing encounters. You can go to the right of the sidebar of conradrocks.net, and you'll see it, Coffee with Conrad, January sponsor, you'll see Nancy Petrie, and there's a full interview with American Family Radio, today's issues. You can listen, I think it's about an hour long clip. She talks a lot about her book. So we want to thank you, Nancy, for being this month's sponsor on, uh, for Coffee with Conrad. Thank you for visiting ConradRocks.net. Conrad Rocks is supported by people just like you. If you've been blessed by Conrad Rocks, please prayerfully consider giving an offering. You can conveniently do so by using the Contribute button on the sidebar at conradrocks.net. Regular contributors get a spot on the Conrad's Comrades page, which links back to the blog or social media of your choice. You can also help Conrad Rocks by sharing your favorite posts on Facebook. Thanks again for being a part of Conrad Rocks. Remember, Jesus rules. That is higher than probably wants to know what I thought about the State of the Union speech. And, you know, I really, I watched some of it, um, and I, 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 it's boring. <laughs> and in the first part of the speech, I was wondering, um, you know, 
basically, I was looking for him to repeat some of the promises that he's made in the first first few years. I don't I don't watch TV at all. We were streaming it over the internet, and uh, basically, I don't watch politics at all. It's not interesting to me, and it's basically just a bunch of crybabies throwing mud at each other. But uh, the first few minutes in this speech, before I tuned out, um, he's quoted some statistic about the deficit being cut in half or something like that. I'm like, you know, that's it. I'm not paying attention anymore. But I did find something interesting that I want to share with you. I want to share what what the Twitter stream says about it. So uh, you'll find some of the benefits of Twitter in building the honeycomb, how we can connect, how we can, how we can um, you know, communicate with each other and actually find some cool stuff. So I'm going to share with you some of the tweets with the hashtag SOTU, which is State of the Union, and this is how people all over the world commit, uh, communicate in real time. They're all talking in real time, and if you monitor that hashtag, um, you can see what people think. You can find some great resources, and here's some of those uh, tweets that I found interesting for you today. Now, of course, these are some of the tweets that I picked out, so I'm somewhat biased. <laughs> if you remember Conrad Rocks, the original, uh, when I before I did Rocks of Revelation being poured out, I was Jesus, Liberty, and Things That Rock. And here's Christine Roman. She tweeted, the lowest jobless rate in five years. And I, I, I think I heard that before I dozed off. I don't know. But here's what she says. Also true, people dropping out of the labor force. Smallest labor participation rate since 1978. So notice the hashtag SOTU. That's for people that are participating in the State of the Union speech in real time. You can do it with the Super Bowl. I used to watch football games, um, and each team has a hashtag. So if you're a Dallas Cowboy fan, you'd have hashtag Cowboys. If you're a 49ers fan, you'd have hashtag 49ers. And what I would do is I would put both of them in my stream so I could watch what both people were saying about the game. And it was like, bam, 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 bam. Anyway, here she has, she's got five retweets because some of the people believe her. And, or, and like, believer. Some people endorse what she's saying enough to retweet it, and some three people favorited it. Um, something interesting here. The smallest labor participation rate in 1978. This is a little bit confusing to me. The lowest jobless rate. I think there's some kind of fudging going on with the statistics there. Apparently, if you stop looking for a job and you're on un unemployment or something, you're no longer considered unemployed or jobless, <laughs> you just, you simply fallen out of the labor force. So that's a statistic that's weird. Now, also you see here, here's a picture. She has a picture of the president uh, holding the constitution and burning it. So I thought that was an interesting, uh, no, that's not her. That's the next guy, Michael Nothern. This is what the president is doing by executive order. Instead of going through Congress. Now notice here, he has the hashtag for those of you that are getting interested in building the honeycomb, um, he has, this is TCOT, right? TCOT is, is top conservatives on Twitter, and that's their communication hashtag. If you're a conservative, there's one called CCOT, which is Christian conservatives on Twitter, which basically is, you know, just a almost, it's a variation of TCOT. So the top conservatives on Twitter, that's how the conservative people, they communicate. Um, Susan has one, CVN conservative voice network um, that's how they communicate so people that they identify like Hannity's was let not your heart be troubled uh, he just had the alliteration of the letters there the L N Y B T and if you'll notice I had a lot of uh, traffic go to my face Conrad Rock's Facebook page because I used that on some he said he was moving out of the state or something and um, so anyway, you'll also notice the hashtag Fox News Chat, um, <laughs> which tells us conservatives probably watch Fox News. And Fox News has a Fox News Chat hashtag, and then he ties this to the State of the Union hashtag. So this is really uh, an awesome way to communicate. If you don't have very many followers, what you look for is you look for trending hashtags, or you look on the Internet, you do an Internet search on hashtags relative to a subject and uh, you can communicate with people all over the world in real time they're talking right now about the things that you're interested in here's another one I thought this was hilarious um, because I did the Justin Bieber thing 
During the State of the Union, did Obama mention a presidential pardon for Bieber? According to Twitter trends, that's a pressing issue. Cuffs for Bieber. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. Um, Marcy Stetch says, My job at Punch Pizza helped me get ahead slash pay my bills in college. So happy to see their con continued commitment to a living wage. State of the Union. That's the hashtag. So my comment on this um, and I, I've been in the business world before. I, I understand from a different perspective on this minimum wage thing. Um, something interesting, when you increase the minimum wage, that's, that's awesome. People need, I understand it's really hard to get by out there on minimum wage. Um, and my heart is, goes out to you. I, I mean, how can someone, how can someone get by? On seven bucks an hour. I mean, let's let's just do the math. Seven times forty, and this is before taxes. That's what two hundred and eighty a week. Times four is like you know almost twelve hundred. Then you take the taxes out, so you got nine hundred. You got nine hundred bucks. Let's say your rent's four fifty minimum. That's a small amount of rent. Uh, let's say you have car insurance. Let's say you have health insurance. All your money's gone before you get to food. So I get it. I get it. But now also look at it, look at it from a business's perspective, and this is the problem. There's more employees than there are business owners, so that necessarily means that if you're there's more voters <laughs> that are affected uh, that want you know like I said the love of money is the root of all evil. So there's more people that can vote money into their pockets as opposed to the business owners. Now, let's say that you own the business and you have a product that you're selling. And you go you look at things from percentages. Let's say that you're you're have a minimum wage, you're paying people $7 an hour because you have to, right? You're not paying them what they're worth. You're paying it because it's the it's the law. And they're worth $7. I mean, they're not worth that, but you have to pay them that. So let's say that this mandate goes up to ten dollars an hour well basically what you've done is you've increased the amount you have to pay your minimum wage labor force by forty percent so where does that money come from okay you have to do one or two things you have to fire you have to one of a few things you have a few options fire some people <laughs> and <clears throat> on the people that you do keep to keep that, um, the reason you have to fire some people is you have to have the same output because you're, you you have a profit margin. Co companies are in business to make money, right? And I know it's 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 all warm and feely, but I mean, if the if the business doesn't make money, then everybody's out of a job. So here we go. We're we're going from seven to ten. I'm just using this as a rough number. Um, I would look at it as like, man, I've got to let some people go number one, or two, I'm going to have to increase everybody's workload to make up for it. Number three, I'm going to have to pass the price off to the consumer. So basically, a minimum wage hike is uh, one other way of driving up inflation. You know, products will go up in price, but basically, if there's no profit made, if there's no profit made, the company closes. Number four, and this is what's been happening drastically, is outsourcing to other countries. Um, a lot of our stuff, if you even call on that, if you have a computer problem, who answers the phone? Someone from India. <laughs> okay. A lot of the telemarketing stuff, the inbound telemarketing is in India. Um, they're even talking about moving stuff to China now. And now you're sending, so you're, because of the American minimum wage, a lot of those jobs are done in foreign countries where now those people are only paid 50 cents a day. So not only are you taking away jobs from Americans, um, you're pushing these jobs to other countries. So that's, that's one way to look at that. Now the other thing that, uh, that I noticed is he did a presidential decree for the federal employees for $10.10. .10. Um, wow. So there you go. He's just just making up laws without consulting Congress. I don't know how you feel about that. Now, here's the next one. Really interesting tool that lets you compare SOTU words used over time. And I found this was pretty cool. Let's click the link here. She's provided a link. Now, 
I thought this was cool. Unfortunately, I had to make it really small for my video audience. But this compares the link that she provided. And I found this from, I want to show you the power of hashtags. This was just people, they're still using the SOTU hashtag right now. Um, it's comparing the words, the number of words that he used in his speech in 2013. Total number of words in the 2013 speech was 6,775, right? You can you can download the speech right there. You can you can read last year's speech and compare this year's speech. And on the right is 6,778. So he used three more words. The word budget was used four times last year, four times this year. Business 14 last year, 13 this year. Um, I, I'm nearsighted, so I may have to zoom in a little bit. Um, economy jobs 54 last year, 54 this year. Education, 15 last year, 5 this year. Energy, 15 last year, 5 this year. So that's that's pretty cool on the power of hashtags. You can find interesting stuff that you maybe never thought of before. So that's the power of Twitter. Now back to the uh, the Twitter stream here. If Obama really wanted people to have more money to spend, he'd lower taxes and reduce government spending. This is by the Snarky Mushroom. Interesting name. Uh, and last, I thought this was kind of like a symptom of America. Jacob says, East Coast to most. I didn't watch SOTU last night. I played The Legend of Zelda. Hi, this is Glenda Linkus from wingsofprophecy.com. You're listening to Coffee with Conrad on conradrocks.net. Okay, if you remember some of those, uh, some of the stuff I did yesterday or talked about was should Christians watch television? I was going on and on about the Grammys and how satanic it was. And, uh, I mean, there was practically practically witchcraft going on. I read the Twitter stream. Uh, there, <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't sacrifice goats or, I don't know. It was pretty bad. And then they had the, the gay wedding thing. And of course, on Coffee with Conrad, Conrad Rocks Now, I talk about things from a Christian perspective. We're going to look, I put a poll up yesterday. And I'll, I'll tell you my thoughts a little bit. We're about to run out of time here. But I'll tell you my thoughts towards the end of this. Uh, but let's just review. I put a, quish, a question up. And you know, this question is designed to inspire conversation. Um, the question on sodahead.com forward slash Conrad Rocks was, should Christians watch TV? Now, Sodahead is not a Christian community. It's just a community like any other community, like Facebook, Twitter. It's just it's, it's a melting pot of all beliefs, religions, and basically, if you speak English and you got an internet, you can go on sodahead.com forward slash Conrad Rocks. And I asked a question that rocks. Should Christians watch TV? Now, here we only had 19 votes. So I was a little disappointed. I've had some questions that rock that have hundreds of votes. Uh, but anyway, here's the uh, the, the available options. Yes, it's okay for Christians to watch TV. No, Christians should not watch TV. And then I had unsure, for those of you that don't know. Uh, <clears throat> usually that's the safest option. I'm just letting you know. This little little Kate. Because <laughs> there's, there's always, I, when I design the questions, I, I try to get them to where, hey, you know, there's there's we need to look at this aspect of it. First off, the word should. The word should um, should give you a clue is what I was thinking about. The word should means used to indicate obligation. Are we obligated to watch TV? As a Christian is what I was thinking. Used to indicate obligation, duty, or correctness, typically when done criticizing someone's actions. So we can go anywhere from are we obligated to watch TV or is it correct? 
basically correct uh, doesn't have the thrust of the obligation but should you know people take the word should in different contexts anyway let's look at the votes here um, believe it or not 58 percent says it's okay now the way I answered the way I had the the, the answers is is it okay so I was leaning not from obligation but I was leaning to um, criticizing or critiquing from a biblical standpoint uh, that type of thing so 58 percent say yes it's okay for Christians to watch TV. 37% uh, said no, Christians should not watch TV. And then unsure, there's just 5%. So here we go. Just remember, and this is for any one belief system, that advertisers put their dollars where their ratings are. So watch what matches your belief system. If you want more of that type of programming, thank you, Brett W97. He says, yes, it's okay. Now, he, he looks at it, apparently before this person cast their vote, they thought about it, and they realize one thing that without unequivocation, people realize that when they watch TV, they're being programmed. I mean, think about it. When you're watching television, I'm always saying that TV has a way of neutralizing faith. Money has a way of neutralizing faith because God says in this scripture that God has chosen the poor in this world to be rich in faith. And now we have to go a little bit further whatsoever is not of faith is sin, right? So I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I've got to walk in faith. And Susan and I were doing a Bible study last night. Um, the just shall live by faith. And and what's the difference between now in this new dis dispensation, the new covenant of walking after the Spirit and walking in faith? We're reading 2 Corinthians 5. I'm trying to remember the exact verse. But Basically, in this in this dispensation, we're a living sacrifice. Romans 12:1. You know, it's a reasonable service. Uh, we walk in faith. We walk after the Spirit, which means we need to be continually walking after the Spirit. So sometimes, what used to work, like if uh, we were reading in Watchman Nee, a sermon that did work once because you were led by the Spirit of God to do it, and it brought up many people to salvation. If you use that same sermon a year later, maybe nothing will happen, but it's because you're not consulting the Spirit. So. Here we see that if you want more of that type of programming, it's like whatever floats your boat. Like if you're a Democrat, you watch CNN. If you're a Republican, you watch Fox, that type of thing. So this person obviously gets that. But he, but he also says, I'm being programmed. I'm being programmed. So um, as far as walking by faith, you know, is God telling you to watch that particular program? The just shall live by faith. Whatsoever is not a faith is sin. So that's one thing to think about. Now, here we go. Here's uh, Trish. She goes, yes, it's okay for Christians to watch TV. Nowhere in the Bible does it say we cannot. Well, we're going to read a couple of scriptures that might have something to do with that. Uh, and obviously, my response is, does the Bible prohibit marijuana smoking? <laughs> So that's my response. Uh, Sister Jean, obviously she's a Catholic. Yes, it's okay. Yes, it's okay for watch Christ, uh, Christians watch TV. I don't see the poll, the point of this poll. And I'm, yes, I'm a Christian. Cal, now see, he doesn't see the point of this poll. He doesn't understand. Calls himself a Christian. Probably hasn't read the Bible. And I'm not saying I'm not saying that it's that watching TV is definitely the worst thing on the planet. I mean, I'm not saying God told me not to watch TV. I watch Netflix every once in a while. I unplugged for a while. But what the reason I unplugged is I started noticing that it was messing with my Christian walk. Like, for instance, when I say television, the programming that this person up here talks about earlier, nowhere in the Bible does it say, uh, hold on, uh, just remember, and this is for anyone of any belief system, advertisers put their dollars where the ratings are. There's product placements and stuff like that. If you want more of that type of programming, see, we're programmed. In the first 30 seconds, your mind goes into alpha state. You stop your critical thinking. All of a sudden, the nexus, the purple pill, you know, the purple pill or whatever, nexium, I can't remember the name of it. Uh, <clears throat> instead of praying, you know, uh, for our sick stomach or instead of praying for our cold or whatever, we immediately go for the drugs. So um, here we have the television, in a way, it's the first thing we go to. Bam, we go to the purple pill. We go to the alka or We go to whatever the television. We start quoting Muslims um, like Dr. Oz. You know, you're a Christian, but you're saying something that Dr. Oz says. What we're doing is we're exalting what we've seen over TV over 
um, what Scripture says, and that's my point, you know. And I, I notice as I watch, like, let's say that you're watching the Grammys. All you're basically wanting to do is watch, you know, maybe a Christian says, oh, I'm going to watch some wholesome entertainment. I want to see who won what. And then all of a sudden you see all this anti-biblical stuff going on. You know, the, they're having a gay wedding ceremony. I mean, come on. And then, and then like, Katy Perry's basically worshiping the devil for several minutes. I mean, you, looking at looking at what she was wearing, you know. So let's talk about some scriptures. Here's a really good place to go. If you want to know what the Bible says about something, this is a good go-to site for free. And unfortunately, it's too big for my screen here, but I'm going to read it for some of my um, radio audience. And they usually use the ESV Bible, which I'm not a fan of. But I just put in, what does the Bible say about television? And then it goes to openbible.info, and then it has topics. So this is very much like a topical biblical search. Um, you can find out what topics you're interested in, what does the Bible say about it. And people basically, they vote on these scriptures. I know it's not, it's not anything Conrad would do, because I don't believe in voting <laughs> on, on things, you know. But people think that these are the most relevant scriptures to watch in television. And I wanted to put this in front of you. Psalm 101.3 in the ESV, it says, I will not set before my eyes anything that is worthless, I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling unto me. So, set something. Notice that we do it. I will not set before my eyes. When we watch television, it's something that we willingly do. It's something that we willingly do. We set it before our eyes. And it's, you know, what value do you get from TV? You're basically being programmed. And anyway, that's that's that. Now, Philippians 4.8, um, this is what they say is relative to watching television. Finally, brothers, whatsoever is true, whatsoever is honorable, whatsoever is just, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Well, in that scripture, Philippians 4.8, true, whatsoever is true, is the television telling you the truth? <laughs> Come on, just watch it for 10 minutes and you'll find a lie. <laughs> Somebody's lying to you about something. Um, whatsoever is honorable is what, what's on television. Is it honorable? Are there people of integrity trying to guarding your souls, shepherding your souls for, the, for salvation? Whatever is just. Is there, you know, is Judge Judy just? I don't even know if she's still on TV, but... You can find, you know, is, is television just? Is pure? Is it pure? Whatever's pure. Is television pure? I, when I watch TV, and I, you know, I turn it off. I, I don't have one in the house or anything. We just, we got rid of it. You know, I get from my information from other ways. But television is not pure. I did a, I did a, a let's see, I'm trying to think of the video. The Moral Decline of America. And man, dude, it went, we went from leave it to beaver to desperate housewives. Profanity. I was listening to a, 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 a newscast the other day. This lady said uh, a curse word on television. And the guy, the guy said, you know, she goes, oh, I shouldn't have said that. He goes, no, the rules have changed. This goes to show you how far television's changed. We used to be able to, we used to not be able to say certain words and now we not only can say them we can do four letter words on television so it's not pure whatever's lovely uh i'm not going to go there it's not lovely whatever's commendable do, do you get a do you get a prize for watching tv <laughs> i mean from from someone holy is it commendable would you want to wear that badge if there's any excellence is watching television, is there excellent? Is it inspiring you to go on to do more for Christ? I know, you can probably make an argument that I watch Christian television. But let me tell you something else. Christian television, let's just step back and look at it Look at it uh, a little bit. And I was talking earlier about how if every pastor in America was a clone of Billy Graham and had that you know, close, biblical doctrine. We prob the church probably wouldn't be in the mess that it's in. So let's let's say that there's 
uh, excellence in television, people are looking for, like, well, I can watch Christian TV. Keep in mind, the television has to pay its bills, okay? Keep in mind also the love of money is the root of all evil. And then also, in the latter days, people will heap themselves up teachers um, with itching ears doctrines. This is what's happening. So when we watch television and we're getting away from our Holy Spirit-led Bible reading, we have a tendency to fall in to false doctrine, especially when other people agree with that false doctrine. You know, they're heaping up many teachers. So anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go there. Um, listen, we're running out of time. I really enjoyed this. But you can, you can follow me on a Most Radical Man on Twitter. Just go over here to the sidebar of conradrocks.net. You'll see all my stuff on the sidebar. Uh, let, me, let me find it for you real quick. Okay, here we are, you know, Coffee with Conrad Satanic Grammys. But if you go over here onto the right, you can see that you can support Conrad Rocks. There's the Contribute button. That's my PayPal button. Also, if you don't have a PayPal account, uh, there are several ways to help uh, team up with ConradRocks.net. You can use credit cards. That's one thing. You don't have to have a PayPal account. Here's the visitors. Now, underneath the visitors, um, there's Conrad links. So right there on the right, you'll see that Conrad Rocks on Twitter right? Conrad Rocks Facebook, that's the Facebook page, Conrad on YouTube, Conrad on Pinterest, and Conrad Rocks G+. So give me a follow on any one of those accounts, and on Twitter, and on Facebook, you can send me news articles, um, like I read Teresa's today, and we'll talk about it. Maybe, maybe I'll read it on air, and give you a shout out. All right, love you guys. See you again tomorrow, 9 o'clock. Central Standard Time in the morning. Get up bright and early and have some coffee with Conrad. Till we meet again, dig deeper, go higher.